Welcome to the Zimmerman Podcast with your host, CEO, wedding professional, educator, and mom, Jessica Zimmerman. This is a brand new Zimmerman Podcast miniseries, Sleeping with a Stranger Under the Cover. In the next few weeks leading up to the release of my memoir, Sleeping with a Stranger, we'll be taking a look under the cover as I share insider information about the story and process behind my memoir, Sleeping with a Stranger, which releases April 7th, 2020. I'm sitting down with Rachel, who will be interviewing me about the deeply personal and never before shared details of my journey through living and writing Sleeping with a Stranger. So let's do this. Let's go under the cover. Hi, Jess. Hey, Rachel. How's it going? It's going great. I'm so excited to ask you questions about the book. So um, let's dive right in. This is a very personal story, the story behind sleeping with a stranger. It's your memoir. So of course it's personal, but um, it's not just a business memoir. It's really, I mean, can you describe kind of the, just a brief overview of the topics and the personal things that you're going to share with all of us in this book? Yeah, it's actually not business at all. And what's interesting is, and that's why it's such a departure and that's why it's scary (laughs) to put out there. It's a lot easier for me to talk about business than it is about my personal life. But basically, I kind of accelerated in business because of what was going on in my personal life. I kind of felt like I didn't have a choice. And so when you would see me promoting my education course saying, you know, I turned my hobby into a business practically overnight. I went from $0 in my bank account to bringing home a six-figure salary in a year. When you hear me say things like that, it's because I had to because of what was going on in my personal life. And that's what was driving the, the, the rapid success of my business. And nobody knows the story behind that. And so this really isn't about business but anyone who's been with me if you've if you've followed along for the last 4 or 5 years there's been a really big thing happening in my personal life that I've never really talked about and um that's what this book is about so if you could give sort of just a brief list of some of the conflict points in your story kind of the big story markers that you're going to share about in your book what would some of those be I think I share I share some about my childhood and my, you know, high school and college days and I think I don't even recognize that person anymore. And just and that's honestly probably some of the most embarrassing stuff to me about the book is because gosh, there's just this girl who's so lost and who doesn't who's so naive, who who hasn't experienced the world at all and just I I read some of those pages and cringe. Um, and so, you know, I think all of us probably have moments like that where we look back on our life and are like, oh, I can't believe I used to be that way or think that way. Or, um, and for me, I was, I would say judgmental because I didn't know any other way to be. I just, um, and today I'm like the least judgmental person. I, I just really accept everyone and the way they choose to live their life and everything. And so, you know, there, we deal with that. We deal with what is it that you're going to be? Like, what are you going to do with your life? Um, we deal with mental illness. We deal with being a caretaker. We deal with um, thoughts of wanting to get out of your relationship. At the core of it, we deal a lot with fear and control. And then there's bits in there too about kind of what happens when you become the person you didn't ask to be. When life is throwing certain things your way and you're like, I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask to be a caretaker at 33 with three babies at home and have to provide for my family. Like, why am I having to do this? And how am I going to do this? Like, it, it, I don't know. It just deals with with a lot of different things. I think, I, I don't know anybody who could read it and not relate to something in it or know someone who could relate to something in it. Oh, and we deal a lot with death. Yeah, as well. 
So um, how does that come into play? I mean, I, of course, know, and I think a lot of longtime listeners might know that you've mentioned that you lost your sister when you were three. But I don't know that our larger audience, um, except for people who've maybe listened to the first episode of Zimmerman Podcast, even know that that happened. Um, So can you tell me a little bit about how that plays into the larger story? Or kind of just how all these things are connected. Yeah. So when I was three, my sister and I were in a car accident and she died. And from that moment on, I just felt different. And I talk a lot about that, like my childhood and how um, I just always felt much different than my peers. I always felt older for some reason and things didn't like the things that mattered to me didn't matter to people around me and how, you know, kind of isolating that was. And I talk about, you know, growing up and and knowing that you're a second born child, but you're you're living your life as an only child and people perceive you as an only child and and kind of grappling with that and how even there's a story in there that I share about the day my daughter was born. I'm not going to share it here because it's a pivotal point in the book, but how even I'm thinking about, you know, the day my sister died, like when my daughter is born. And I think another piece that we really touch on, because my husband also dealt with a, with a, with a death, a, a very, very serious death and how, when you don't deal with grief, it stays in like grief has to get out. And if you don't, allow it to move through you, it will disintegrate you. It will tear you up inside. It will, it will slowly kill you. And so just kind of how we dealt with grief very differently and how, when we came together, we kind of had to get on the same page about it. And I don't know, I think it's a, I think it's an interesting look into family dynamics and, and everything, but yeah, I mean, it it affected my whole life. It's yeah, it's, it's a big part of the book. Mark your calendar for April 7th. It's book launch day. If you want details on my upcoming book tour, like cities I'll be visiting, how you can meet me in person and get a signed copy of the book, you've got to get your name on the list. This list, it's going to get you the VIP treatment. We've got awesome bonuses prepared, but only for those who have signed up. Go to sleepingwithastranger.com to become a VIP today. That's sleepingwithastranger.com. I think that everyone can relate to the feeling of how people perceive you not match up with who you feel you are and who you think you are and how frustrating that can be and um, how you kind of have to fight to find your identity through that. Can you tell me a little bit about the role that Brian plays in this book? Um, And then I want you to talk about why you decided to write this book now. Brian plays a big role in this book. And I think a lot of people are going to read it and go, did Brian know you were writing this? <laughs> and um, yes, he knew I was writing it. And he, um, I I say all the time, and, and I said this to him yesterday, actually, we were talking about it because all the deadlines are coming up now, you know, the, the final proofreading and it's about to go, you know, we, we shot the cover yesterday and, and the cover gets turned in, in a couple of days and, um, and we are about to, you know, we'll go to print soon. I mean, so everything's kind of happening and, and I just believe with all my heart and soul, like we were given this experience because we might be two of the only people in the world that would get it out. Meaning that, I kind of overshare anyway. Like I'm, I'm happy to just if 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 my story can sh- can help, then I'm I'm more than willing to share it. And sometimes I share too much, and people are like, "Okay, I didn't need to know all that." But I I'm willing to share it. I am able to write it, and Brian is willing for me to share it. Like he knows that it's going to help people, and we knew when all of this was happening that it wasn't for nothing, that this was eventually going to be part of our lives and how we would help other people. We didn't really know 
in what format that would be or how, but like just when we were, I remember just being in the thick of it and, and saying, you know, this isn't for nothing. Like uh, this is happening for a bigger reason. And so I, I believe that that's, yeah, he's, he's a big part of the book. Well, I think that's a great place to pick up next week um, where we're going to talk a little bit more about the moment you knew you were going to write a book and kind of the time between that moment and when you actually sat down to write the book and realized, okay, this is happening now. Um, So I can't wait to talk with you about that um, in next week's episode of Under the Cover. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Zimmerman Podcast miniseries, Sleeping with a Stranger, Under the Cover. Don't forget, you can get book updates and VIP treatment at sleepingwithastranger.com. The book will be available April 7th in stores and online. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time.